as funny as it is to imagine a student doing bottle flipping as a talent at a talent show, you know that that's happened. All right, so the senior talent show is taking place this afternoon. Michael is in stats class practicing his act, which is bottle flipping. He tells his friends that the probability of successfully landing the water bottle right side up is 20%. I feel like he shouldn't be doing this as his talent if that's how good he is at it, but maybe he's charismatic or something. <laughs> we'll assume that each flip is independent. Okay, so for one through four, I want you to try these on your own. Um, pause the video, and then we'll recap once you hit play. Okay, so it's very useful in number one if you notice that it's binomial. But B, binary, it's either landing up or down. Independent, uh, they told us they're independent. And we have a set number of trials, which is 10. He's flipping it 10 times. And P, the probability of success, is the same each time. It's 0.2. So we're going to have X be the number of times that it lands up. I like to define x once I've identified something as binomial just to clarify any future questions. Is x talking about landing up or landing down? You know, like I want to be able to look back and quickly see what x is. So the expected number of times for it to land up, that's the same thing as the mean. And since it's binomial, we can do n times p and get two times. So once again, I don't think he should be doing this for the talent show if he's only going to land it twice out of 10 times. But hey, whatever, you know. What's the probability that he makes exactly two flips? I just did binome PDF, so we have 10 trials. Probability of success is 0.2, x is 2, 30% chance. Probability that he makes less than two flips. This would be the same as x less than or equal to 1, because notice this problem just says less than, not less than or equal to. So I did binome CDF, and I put in 1 for x. And then what's the probability that he makes at most two flips would be less than or equal to two. So this includes two. I did binome CDF, but this time I put in two. So far, this is all a binomial review. Okay, now remember Michael is practicing for this ill-advised talent show performance during statistics. Uh, so his teacher is definitely getting annoyed with the sound of a bottle flipping. Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> She tells him that he has to stop it once the bottle lands right side up, which if she knew how bad he was at it, she probably wouldn't have said that. So the probability that he lands it on the first try. That one's really easy. It's just 20%. 20% chance of landing. Probability that he fails on the first try and lands it on the second try. So this is an and scenario. We want fail and success. Fail on the first try would be 0.8. Success on the second point two, we multiply them together, there's a 16% chance that he has to stop on the second try. Find the probability he fails at the first two and lands on the third. You can probably see a pattern here, 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.2. We want fail and fail and success. So the probabilities are getting smaller now. Probability that he fails in the first three. I'm going to shorten this up and just say 0.8 raised to the third times 0.2. And this pattern can continue for as long as we want. What we're doing here is subtly different than what we are doing in 1, 2, 3, and 4. Think about the BINS acronym for binomial distributions and try to figure out which one of those is different here. Compared to 1 through 4, if we think about BINS, the four characteristics of a binomial distribution, the one that's different here is N. In a binomial distribution, we have a set number of trials. Here we don't have a set number of trials, we're doing something until we see success. So this is not a binomial distribution, but it does have a name. It's called a geometric distribution. Now my particular textbook uses a different acronym called BITS. What does BITS have to do with the word geometric? I have no idea. Um, BITS is what we have. Still binary, still two outcomes, still independent, still the same probability on each trial, but we don't have a set number of trials. We are going for trials until success. So T for trials, it's not their best work. But you know, sometimes acronyms work better when they're like really bad, so bad that you have to remember them. Now we have bins for binomial and bits for geometric. Bins and bits. Okay, so now let's fill out this table. X is the number of flips it takes for Michael to land the bottle right side up. So it's not the number of times he gets it right out of 10 trials, it's the first time that he succeeds. So you'll notice there is no zero as one of our outcomes. The smallest value of x is one, which would be him making it on the first trial. We already have the first four. See if you can find the fifth and the sixth right now. Pause the video and fill out that table. 
So one interesting thing about geometric distributions is that they're infinite. This could keep going forever. Yes, it's very unlikely that he continues this for thousands of trials, but it's possible. And if you imagine graphing these probabilities, we saw in the last video that binomial distributions can look normal. This is super not normal. A geometric distribution is always going to look skewed because the largest probability is for the first trial and everything after that is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, the probability that he lands it on the 10th try. We already kind of saw this pattern, but basically what we have to do is the probability of failure raised to the number of failures and then just a single success. So if there's a very small chance, 2% chance, that he lands it on the 10th try. For a generic formula, here's what I wrote. Probability that x equals k. In this case, k is the trial of the first success. It's not the number of successes, it's the trial where we first see success. We're doing probability of failure raised to the number of failures, which is just k minus 1, times the probability of a single success. For geometric distributions, I really don't think you need to memorize this. It's just common sense. We have this many failures and one success. That's it. We don't have to do the step in the binomial distributions where we had to figure out, well, how many ways could we arrange these numbers of successes? Because we know the arrangement. It's all failures until the one success. All right, how many flips do you expect it to take for the bottle to land right side up? Well, the probability of success is one fifth, so probably five flips. We expect the bottle to land right side up in about one of every five flips. We probably have to see five flips in order to see one land. This is actually the formula for mean for a geometric setting. The mean of x is just one over the probability, one over p. So here our probability was 0.2, one over 0.2 is five. This is on the formula sheet. How many times have I said don't memorize it? It's on the formula sheet. So here's the mean for a geometric distribution. And look, they even give you this formula, which I think is a waste of space because as previously mentioned, it's pretty straightforward. And they give you the standard deviation here as well. So no need to memorize. Side note, now we've talked about everything in the probability section of the formula sheet. How crazy is that? There's some space on the next page in case you want to jot down any notes if there wasn't room in the margins. Um, but for now, pause the video and try the check your understanding problem on your own. All right, so we have a geometric distribution. Um, this fits the BITS acronym. B for binary, a person either has gum or not. I for independent. It's reasonable to assume that one person having gum doesn't influence if other people have gum. T, we're asking until we see success, so there's not a set number of trials, we're just asking until we get gum. And S, it's the same probability of success on each trial, it's 30%. For the probability that the third person is the first one to have gum, that's two fails and one success. So failure is 0.7, we raise that to the second, then success, there's our probability. Now the first piece of gum by the third person, we could add the probability that G is one, two, or three, and those would just be a couple quick calculations. There is an option on your calculator called geometric CDF, um, and geometric PDF. That's in the same location as binome um, and norm CDF. I would say most of the time for geometric, it's easier to just do it by hand, um, especially if you look at number two, like that was really easy to type in without having to go second, distribution, geometric, probability, x, like that's a lot of typing when you could just quickly do 0.7 squared times 0.3. Sometimes when it's less than or equal to, I like to use CDF just because it saves a little bit of time, but it's totally up to you. How many people do we expect to ask? That's the same thing as the mean, so we're doing 1 over p. So we expect to ask 3.333 people, even though that doesn't really make sense in real life, it's okay to give an answer that doesn't quite make sense. The probability of having success on the 30th trial is 0 0.00000966. So yeah, um, that'd be pretty unlikely, and I would be pretty surprised if the first piece of gum we found was the 30th student we asked. And last but not least, this one just asks us to find the standard deviation. It's root 1 minus p over p. So 2.79 people, that's really all you have to do for that one. I would say that geometric distributions come up a lot less than binomial distributions, just because binomial distributions can so often be approximately normal, like those come up all the time. Geometric, not as much, but it's still good to look at. It's a good review of a lot of key probability rules. And it is important that you can distinguish between a binomial and a geometric distribution, which means remembering the acronym BINS and BITS.
I always make fun of those, but I've never spent the time to make anything better. So bins and bits it is. <laughs>